Hallelujah. So, last week we, we looked at different things, but I want to pick up at the last point where we ended on Joseph. Okay, and then we will build from there. <coughs> For those that were not here, I just want to, uh, to let you know that our theme for this year is the year of consecration and separation. Or a year of separation and consecration. Okay? Now today, I want to explain why. Listen, um, this, this, this is not where Laston wakes up and begins to connive and say, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to coin the theme? No. I was on my bed around 1 a.m., I think 1.30, and the Lord began to minister to me. And this is where I felt like God is taking us. And if we are going to walk in obedience, with, in consecration, and if we are going to walk in separation, there's a, you, you, the, the, the things that God will do, we will marvel. I promise you. By this time next year, if we walk in separation and consecration, the things that God will do in our lives, among our children, in our society, we will testify. So we begin reading from Genesis 39, 7 to 9. And you help us, please. And the Bible records, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, Lie with me. And, but he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master what wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither he hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Praise the name of the Lord. My interest is the last statement. How can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? What I want to bring to your attention is that at this point of Joseph in his life, he had no pastor preaching to him. Hallelujah. At this point of Joseph in his life, he was first in captivity. He is actually a slave. And only by the mercies of the Lord, he has found himself in the house of Potiphar. And as God would have it, he favors him to a point where he gives him authority over his house. But the Bible declares the devil is always trying. And the devil began to find expression in this woman called the wife of Potiphar. And she began to lust after him. Now this man, Joseph, a young man, with every passion in him burning, looks at this woman and says, I will not do this wicked thing. He didn't have a pastor around him. There were no motivation speakers telling him how God good is and how God loves him. There was no Bible for him to read and get encouragement. No one called him from Canaan or indeed from Bethel and say, listen, Joseph, it is well, it shall be well with you, hold on, nothing. Joseph 
Joseph had reached to a point where God in him was never an opinion. Joseph had come to a point where God was not an idea that he read in a book. Joseph had come to a point where God was not a theory created by man. Until Christ is formed in you, until Christ is formed in me, until Christ stops being an idea, until Jesus Christ stops being a theory, and becomes a reality upon your life and your very being is built. This journey called Christianity will forever remain a fallacy. This journey called Christianity will forever remain a fallacy. Unless the people that are called by his name. The church comes to terms with who they are in Christ. This will forever be a story. We have entered a new dimension. We have entered a new dispensation. Listen to me. God has not changed. He is the same God who began to deal with Abraham. But when he called him, there is one element that he began to do with. First thing, he called him for separation. Away from the undue influences of his brothers, undue influences of his father and the gods of his father. Brought him into a place of nowhere where Abraham could not look up to man to borrow some money or a cow or sheep. But to look solely to God for his journey ahead. Until you come to that point in life, you have not begun with God. But I pray that as we begin this year, You will not need a headmaster over your head. You will not need a man to shepherd you. You have come into the fullness of God. When you read the word, it becomes alive. And this is the place where I want us to begin. If we miss these realities from the very beginning, we will forever be wandering around in circles. There's a place God is taking us to. David the other day said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And it was only many years later that the Apostle John brings the full revelation of what the word was. And he declares in John 1, And the word was made flesh and the word dwelt among men. So when you heard David declare in Psalm 119 that thy word have I hid, it is not the word he has hid, Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Thy word, thy word have I hid in my heart. It doesn't matter where I'm placed. It didn't matter where Joseph was. Joseph was in the middle of nowhere among strangers, men that have no understanding of who he was. The only thing that Joseph had was a dream. And out of the dream, he was convinced beyond the shadow of doubt that this is not a communication of man. There is a God out there. T. 
child of God. Psalm 1911, I think. Psalm 1911. Am I right? Someone, can you read it for me? Psalm 1911. David was not in church. David was not, he, so, sorry, um, uh, 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 Joseph was, was not in church. Joseph was not among his kindred. He was isolated. But regardless of the isolation, the man resolved to be with God and to walk right before God. I will not do such a wicked thing and sin against my God. Can I have a people that have come to make a resolve regardless of the situation? Be it I am on the deathbed and I'm dying. I will not question God, why have you not healed me? Though I am living in a point where there is no food in my house, I will not question God, why haven't you provided? Because I know beyond the shadow of doubt, he is Jairi, and my lacking of food does not change who he is. As we begin this journey with God in this new year, these are fundamentals, these are paradigms that I want you to understand, not as a group, not because we call church. That's why I don't do church. You need to come into a relationship with your maker. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us begin the journey. Exodus 15. Hallelujah. 22 to 26. I want you to understand these fundamentals as we move forward in this new year. 2021. Listen, God, God is not, there's nothing that God cannot do. How many believe that? There's nothing that you cannot do. Hallelujah. But you will see that you are a limitation to yourself. Ah, I didn't get an amen. You are the limitation to yourself. <laughs> the Bible records in Exodus 15 from 22. The Bible says, that, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And they went out into the wilderness of Shah. This wilderness of Shah, if you have read your Bible, it is the same place that Hagar went into when Sarai, before she conceived, out of her own doing, got Hagar and gave her to the husband Abraham. And when she was with child, Sarai was not very, very pleased. And she began to have squabbles with, with Hagar. And then, out of fear, the woman went into the wilderness. And the Bible records that she went into this place called Shah. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Next verse, please. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the water of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? <laughs> and he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken, underline that statement. This is the command that he gave them after he provided. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, not if you fear last on, not if you, no, no, no. If thou had diligently hearkened to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in the sight, in his sight, 
and we would give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you are looking for the title of this message, is let he who has understanding understand. Let he who has understanding. If the Lord has given you understanding, may you understand that which the Spirit is communicating this morning. Hallelujah. The story told us here is of the story of the children of Israel. Now what you want to understand as you journey in this story is that it was not Moses who delivered the children of Israel. God himself with his outstretched arm wrought miracles to a point of killing the first bones of Egyptians. Children and animals alike. If you had a chicken and it was a first bone, it died. If you had a dog and it was a firstborn, it died. If you are a man and you have a child was a firstborn, that child died. Oh, for God to show forth his glory for his children. And it is at that point that you begin to understand that there is nothing that God cannot do for you. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. There is nothing, there is nothing that he cannot do for you. He will go to the extent of slaughtering men for your sake that you may worship him. Hallelujah. So as we move in this 2021, I want you to come in this new season with this understanding. That God is leading you and taking you to a place. And there is nothing that is impossible with him. The same God that you are looking at, at this point you find him. Just a couple of verses behind, he has just parted the Red Sea. He has just done an impossibility. And now he brings them to a place. Now you need to understand that as they journeyed, it wasn't Moses navigating. Moses had tapped into the frequency of God. And God was downloading the, 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 the directions of the trip of where they should go. To begin with, how and why would he deliver them out of Egypt and all the lovely places around? He directs them into the desert. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> unless God stops being an idea. Unless God stops being a story in the book and becomes a reality. We will forever walk in circles. The idea of going to Canaan was not Moses. It was God's. And it was God that began to navigate. Listen, you are here and you are like Beryl. You are eight years old. There is a reason why God has preserved you in this time and in this season. And uh, like what Angie was saying, yes, to you it is a pain in your body. But as far as God is concerned, that pain creates an opportunity for you to minister to men that if you were well, you would never in your lifetime meet them and minister the gospel. <laughs> ah, you need the mind of God. You need the mind of God to understand how God operates. He begins leading them in the wilderness. Why of all places lead them in the wilderness? You look at yourself and you say, the year 2020 was bad. Ah, we don't know how 2021 will come. But the Bible declares the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Let he who has understanding hear 
what the spirit of a living God is saying. Unless you get this principle, unless you understand this truth, you won't be able to navigate nicely in this new year. He leads them into a place where there is nothing but sand. And if you have gone to deserts, you understand that the night is the most cold because there is no clouds to hinder the heat. Or the, 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 no, because the heat escapes and the clouds, you know why it gets warm in the evening? Because when the earth is heated, when the earth is heated, the, the clouds somehow trap the heat. So the earth is warmed. But when you are in the desert, there is no cloud. So the heat escapes, creating some serious coldness in the night. And during the day, it is so hot because there is no cloud to shield you. I, I want you to understand the mind of God. And then God says, you will journey in this path. It is full of sand. No matter how you cultivate, everything will be yellow within two weeks. And you say 2020 was bad. <laughs> hey, if only you knew that he brought you into that place, into this time. Listen, what you need to understand is that God is not on the throne panicking. Haven't you heard that he's Alpha Omega? He finishes before he starts. So he's not trying to figure out what he's going to do with Angie because she has lost her job. But he's not figuring out what you're going to do and what, what your next move is. No, 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 no. Before time began, he ordered everything in place. Question is, will bet a line and eat the good of the land? Until God ceases being an idea. God wants to break the children of Israel from that mentality of believing on the Egyptians and enter into the economy of God. You want to journey in this new year? I came to tell you, may the spirit of a living God give you understanding. That is why he opened the Red Sea and closed it. There is no way of going back. Have you said to yes to Jesus, you will not go back. <laughs> the Red Sea is closed. You have no choice but to cooperate with God. Otherwise, you will be miserable, I promise you. I'm not speaking doom. There is a blessing in God only if you walk in obedience. They will tell you 2021 will be the worst. Yes, now there is a, even a new strain. Ah, and there will be another new strain. I walk in the economy of God. There is something called the blood of Jesus. Don't need a vaccine. If I was to die, I would have died years back. Four or five years older, death visited me. It had no power because purpose was calling. Because destiny was calling. You have a purpose and you have a destiny. All you have to do is learn to cooperate with God. God has brought you out of 2020 because he wants to grow your faith. And as you journey in this new season, he is still growing your faith and he wants to grow your trust in him. He lifted them out of the abundance of the cucumbers, of the nice meat, of all the garlic and the cloves that they ate. But he brought them in the middle of nowhere so that they can look to no one but only him. You know what your problem is? You still have options. That's where the problem is. You still have options. You still have ideas. You still have ideas. Let me show you. Abraham and Sarah had an idea. And, and, and yes, it came to pass. But it delayed the purpose of God for 15 years. Read your Bible. Listen, God, God does not emotion. If you, if you are not willing to cooperate with God, you will die. Listen to me. 
you will die. And if that purpose is in your generation, God will raise your children to walk into the purpose that he had ordained for you. I'm telling you the truth. Until everyone above the year of 20 that walked not in the will of God, walked in disobedience, they all perished walking around circles. Until a new generation that had a mind to cooperate with God, then he said, Joshua, now you can march in. These are not stories. You want to be victorious in the new year? May the spirit of a living God give you understanding. These are bare basics that you need to ride on for you to journey. Hallelujah. Now tell me, how does a stick... Look, God is the one who is leading them. God is the one who is ordering their steps. And yet he takes them to a place where he knows that on this path, they will come to the water which is bitter. Why? He brings you into a moment that is beyond your capacity. He brings you into a moment that is beyond your will, that is beyond your skill set. And then he introduces you into his economy, which does not make sense at all. Less than two years in this nation, I'm believing God for a car, and here comes a woman and says, here is a car. <laughs> You don't know the economy of God. You don't know the economy of God. How can a stick, tell me, how can a stick thrown into water makes it sweet? It's called the economy of God. He wants to grow your faith. He wants to grow your trust in him. Beyond what you have known and masters of years of experience, he comes and begins to baffle you. May the spirit of a living God give you understanding. He's not planned for you to fail. What he wants is for you to cooperate and work with him. Hallelujah. Verses 26. Don't worry, I'm going to take very long today. It's fine, you can rest. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I want to deliver the word of a living God. Praise the name of a living God. And you give us verses 26. And just remember, if you're tired, there's one more scripture to go. Another 30 minutes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And said, if that will diligently hearken, I want you to underline that statement. You know, uh, like I began mentioning to you, to Joseph, God was not an idea. There is a place you need to come in God that nothing moves you, but you solely trust and believe. You need to be diligent and adhere to what he's saying. If you hearken unto my voice, hallelujah, and do that which is right in my sight. You see, the biggest deception that the church has been brought into is the fear of men. That is the biggest problem. We, we are scared of men. We, 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 we treat God as if God is blind. Like he only sees you when you are in church. Yet you forget that God is the one that causes your lungs to draw in air and bring it out when you are in the depth of your sleep. I show you, I show you, if you have understanding, fear God. Fear God. Child of God, in this new year, that is why he is quickening you to separate. That is why he's quickening you to consecrate. Because there is a place when you consecrate and when you separate, then he begins to alight upon you. Hallelujah. 
And if you are cooperating with God, he declares there will be no disease, no sicknesses, no harm, no shame. That it is with befalling the heathen will not be your portion. Why? Because you have walked in faithfulness with God. The other thing you will notice is that in this whole scenario, there were only one or two people that had the spirit of God. And this was Moses and Aaron. And these are the people in whom God was finding expression. But child of God, when Christ hung on the cross of Calvary, and when you read the book of Acts, he began telling the disciples that I need to go, that I can send you the spirit, the comforter, he who show you all truth. So, in the old dispensation, it was Moses who had the privilege to journey in God and know and understand the mind of God. In this new dispensation, you, Glenn, has the grace to tap into God. And know the mind of God. Know how which stick is going to make that water sweet. It is not a preserve of pastors. It is not a preserve of apostles. It is not a preserve of bishops. It is whosoever shall believe. Are you the church of Christ? That dimension has been downloaded in you. This is where it becomes critical. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 15 to 19, as we conclude. I want to show you, and I pray that you have grace to understand. Let he who has understanding hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying. <laughs> know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? <laughs> Children of God, I want you to pay very, very careful attention. The reason why God has told us to separate and consecrate, there's a way in which God operates. There were thousands of Israelites, but God was only operating with one man who had his spirit. Did you hear what I said? He was operating with either Aaron or Moses, because at that time, they were the only two people that were embodied with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I, I want you to pay very particular understanding, because there's a place God is taking, taking you to. There's a place to where God is taking home church fellowship as a church, but there's a place that home church fellowship needs to come to. We are not a building. Can I get an Amen. We are, not an, we are not a building. We are a people built by God. And Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to unhallowed is one body? For two, he saith, saith he, shall be one flesh. You, 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 just, just, just pause there, Angie. How many know that you have been purchased? How many know that you have eaten the body of Christ? How many that you know that you have become one with Christ? <laughs> You know, the, the enemy brings ignorance because he knows. Hallelujah. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to unhallowed is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Next verse, Angel. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? Is what? Is one spirit. So the, the, the dimensions that you see God bring forth through Moses, these very dimensions God is willing to bring through to you and through you. 
and your body is very paramount. That's why he called you to separation. That's why he called you to consecration. Because there is something that he wants to do. But only when you are brought, brought to this place where you have become one with the Spirit of God. 18. Flee fornication. Now this is guidance. This is, this is, this is wisdom. For men that have journeyed with God, that have tried and tested, and they know that if you are going to remain in the economy of fornication, the Spirit of God will not be able to function through you because you become one with wickedness. But if you remain one with the Spirit, as you begin this year, 2021, separate and consecrate, every sin that a man doeth without the body but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Now, that is the critical phase. I know you are tired, but I'm going to minister this. Because this is the foundation for your moving forward in God in this new year. And I'll show you why. May God give you understanding. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In other words, how many know that spirits are alien here on earth? How many know that? Evil spirits are alien. Even the Spirit of God. Until he finds resident in you. You know why men do the things they do? You know why murderers murder? It's because that spirit of killing is operating in him and he begins to do that which it wants. Do you know why you wake up at 1 a.m. and begin to bubble in tongues and begin to pray? It's because the spirit of a living God is alive in you and you are walking in obedience to the spirit of God. A murderer will never wake up at 1 p.m. and begin to seek the face of God. Let he who has understanding understand what the spirit of a living God is saying. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not of your own. You carry not just the Spirit. You carry the Holy Spirit. Not just the Spirit. You carry the Holy Spirit. And when God begins to function, when God begins, he says, I looked for a man. Why was God troubled looking for a man and he found none? Because there was none positioned themselves to cooperate with the spirit of God. That out of them, they can begin to flow. That out of them, God can begin to find expression to do that which he wants to do. We're talking of revival. You want to see revival in 2021? It won't come from heaven. It will be you and me. Once we yield the spirit of a living God, then we will be quickened to bring forth that revival of God. But unless we know who we are, unless we understand these dimensions, God will forever remain a song that we sing in a hymn. I pray it will not be my portion. I refuse. It won't be the portion of home church fellowship. Out of here, God will raise apostles. Out of us, God will raise intercessors. Out of us, God will raise evangelists. Out of us, God will work out miracles that no man will fathom. These are not stories. I'm not trying to psych you. Listen, I'm not a man who pleases men. I think by now you know. I, I, I don't tell people what they want to hear. I speak the truth. I have been called, not by men. I have been called by God. You know, you know why, you know why your body is, is a confluence of activities of wickedness? You are... You are, sorry, I, 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 I'll keep using 
the example of our, our, our dear sister Bero. Okay? Bero is 80. When you look at Bero, you may be thinking, yes, Bero has been around and knows it all. Listen, your adversary, if, you, if, if, if experience is anything to go by, his experience dates way back before time. His experience, if you ask our patriarch, Adam, he has come into contact with this devil. Thousands of years. Then you, you come today, 15 years, 14 years, my son, and you think you know better. Hey, Papa, 50, you haven't seen anything, Papa. You have got no idea what the devil can do. Your safety is to cooperate with God. You are too young when it comes to experience. Angie, Angie, you have got, you, you, you have got no idea. Kings have fallen. Might men have fallen. Men full of the Holy Spirit have run away. Ask, ask uh, uh, Elijah. Then we, we, we can't cooperate with the Spirit of God. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are in compromise. And, and we, we expect to, 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 to bring him down. Listen. He, he, they, they ask the sons of Sceva. He looks at them and says, Paul, I know. So he knows. Jesus, I know. And who are you? Who are you? Until you have come to the place where you relinquish yourself. Where, you see, why he lures you into lasciviousness? Because he wants you to be porous. When he lures you into wickedness, it means it, the door has opened for his demons to begin to find expression in you. And do you know why God is beckoning you to holiness? Do you know why God is every day beckoning you to righteousness? Why he wants you to be holy? Because once you are holy, then, his spirit, then God can do business with you. <laughs> oh. Listen, God has got no, God has got no problem delivering your children. <laughs> God has got no problem. Look, the Bible speaks of Stephen. The man was only saving, but the Bible says a man full of the Holy Spirit. It is, it is not a respecter of man. In this 2021, the Lord can open doors for your family. The Lord can break yokes that have reigned for years. All he wants is for you to cooperate. So the devil comes and lures you. He continuously brings the anger because that we, there's a word which says, do not let the sun go down with bitterness. And he steers you up. And one week you are still annoyed. You can't bring forth the purpose of God. Ah, people of God. We, 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 we don't do church. Listen, God, Jesus, goes to heaven and he tells his disciples he has been with them for years. He tells them you will not make it in this earth. You will not make it. You will, you won't tarry in Jerusalem until I send you the spirit. You can't make it. The enemy, look, 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 look what the enemy is doing. Look how the enemy has arisen. Look how he's fighting our children. Look how he has fought the church. You can't clap hands. You can't sing together. You can't hug. Look what he's doing. Unless you reposition, unless you walk in holiness, that his spirit may begin to find expression. Because in your own ways, you can't do anything. You need him. Jesus. Jesus, the one that you, you are calling upon, the one that you sing upon, he needed him. He needed him. He needed the spirit. And the Bible says the very spirit that raised Christ from the dead, is re that's the economy under which you operate. It is that spirit. Now listen, the devil knows that if you are walking in consecration, if you are walking in righteousness, if you are right with God, you will defeat him.
He knows. That's why he brings all the alluringes. He brings lasciviousness. He brings the beautiful women and all the caves. He brings the beautiful men. He brings all the crafts of this world. Listen, you are an amateur to the devil. You are a child. If experience is anything to compare, you are nothing unless you are operating with Christ because only him conquered. Only him the Bible declares he made him a public spectacle. That Jesus won't dwell in you. He dwells in you through the spirit. And he does not dwell in defiled bodies. That's why the enemy wants your body to be defiled. Because he knows your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And once the spirit of a living God has found resident in the temple, that is right. Then you will be able to do business with God. We don't pre preach this gospel because we, we want to be loved. This is life and death. A new year has come. To the world it is a year. To God is a season. Question is, do you know what God is saying? Do you know what God is doing? I've showed you the secrets. I've showed you the truth. I've showed you how God operates. Let he who has an ear Hear what the Spirit of a living God is saying. My motto and my mantra, my declaration and my decree this year, Joshua 24, 15. If it is evil to save God, you are on your own. As for me and my house, as for me and my wife and my children, we will save the Lord. Choice is yours. Align with God and see him do wonders in your family. Do wonders in your business. Look, it's, it's a, a, a job. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a business, money. Listen, people. God, can you count the fish that is in the sea? Up to now, the explorers have not found the, all the species that dwell in the sea. They say it's, a, it's, it's, it's the deepest place that they, they cannot explore. And what did he do? Let there be. And there was. <laughs> May God bring you in his understanding. You're, you're, you're fighting for, 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 for a house. You're, you're fighting for, 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 for one million. Paper. Given value by man. <laughs> we are so miserable. May God grant us understanding. May, may God grant us understanding. Listen, listen. I, I pray that God will open the eyes of your understanding. Let he who has understanding understand. Did you know God? Hundred years old, barren. She confesses to say, I am like a dead stick. And God says, I am God. Let me show you. And the nation, nations are born. So you come here in this earth, sent by the glories of heaven to carry out his purpose, and you get lost in matters of men. You get lost in gossips. You get lost in politics. You get lost. Ah. You are an ambassador of heaven. Isaiah 60 it declares, arise and shine. It says, darkness, gross darkness will cover the earth. But in this moment, the expectation of the Father is that you will arise and shine. May God bless you.